Namaste students. Let's look at another problem with regard to parallel circuits. Problem 1.8. A current of 10 amps is divided between two resistors in the circuit of figure 1.17. You can see this figure. Find the current in each of the two resistors. So R1 is 2 ohm, R2 is 4 ohm. We can take the respective currents as I1 and I2. The total circuit current or supply current I is 10 amperes and the voltage is not given. We have already solved one where the voltage was not given and we found out a special case of equal resistances. Let's see how it is for different resistances. I hope you have noted down the figure. We know that I1 is equal to I into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. We have done this few times for resistances in parallel in the case of two resistors. Hence, here I1 is equal to 10 whole thing into 4 divided by 2 plus 4 which is equal to 6.66 amperes. Now, when you take that node, I2 is equal to I minus I1 because you know they both add to give the full supply voltage. Hence, that is I2 is 10 minus 6.66 which is equal to 3.34 amperes. Alternately, you can solve with the same formula for parallel resistors as I2 is equal to I into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. When you do this also, you should get the same answer because I2 would be equal to 10 into 2 divided by 2 plus 4 which is 3.34 amps. Your full answer would be the value of I1 which is 6.66 amps and the value of I2 which is 3.34 amps. But note this down. Thus, it is seen that the lesser the resistance, the greater is its share of the supply current. The converse too is also applicable. You saw that when the resistances were equal, they equally shared the supply current. But here, with unequal resistances, the resistance having a lower value has a greater share of the supply current value. The converse too is also applicable. Remember this for other applications as well. Moving on to the next topic that is 1.6 series parallel circuit. It may be often necessary to use combinations of series and parallel arrangement of resistors. You won't always have just a series or just a parallel. Such circuits can be solved by combining first the parallel groups into an equivalent resistance and then adding this equivalent resistance to other series resistances to determine the total resistance. So you have to first simplify the parallel part and then add it on to the series part because you know series can be simply added. When you first reduce the parallel part you can get rid of all the reciprocals. The current produced by the voltage applied can then be obtained as usual because finally you will get one total resistance and do that. We will solve some problems in the coming sessions so that you can better understand this concept of series parallel circuit and how to apply them in the following ways. So we will see that in the next sessions.